Welcome back. Um, hopefully you're still awake after my little video showing you how to get the figures for Jane Slater's income statement for the year ending 30th of June 2017. I'm now going to go through the same process but with her statement of financial position. So the starting point for this is going to be the statement of financial position for the year to 30th of June 2017. This one should be accurate. It's an actual um, SOFP. It's been based on actual figures. Um, we're also going to need to have a look at the, um, the income statement. So if you remember, we'd already prepared the budgeted income statement for the year to June 2018. So at the very least, we're going to need to copy that profit figure over um, onto the financial statement, sorry, statement of financial position for the year ended 2018. So why not make a start with that? So the profit for the year we reckoned was 68,382. So let's pop that in down here. I'm just going to assemble some figures, 68,382. The other thing that we can put straight in is the um, 57,500 that was closing capital last year is actually going to become the opening capital um, in 2018. Okay. So going through the rest of it then, um, if we start up here with our non-current assets, um, we weren't told that Jane had bought any new non-current assets during the year, so we don't need to worry about that. But we do know from the income statement that she's provided another £3,600 worth of depreciation. So if we add that to the 4000 that was already there, we know that the net book value now is just going to be 32000 400, a little bit of mental arithmetic there. Um, okay, so moving on then to the current assets. Inventory um, last year was £21,000 on the statement of financial position, which tallies up with the opening inventory on her income statement. Now, obviously, the closing inventory is the one that we want for 2018. That 20250 that is going to be the figure that we need to use here. So I'll write that over here. Okay, so that's just literally taken straight off of the um, income statement, the closing inventory figure. Now, trade receivables last year were £15,000. If you look at the um, additional information that she's given us, which I've probably got somewhere here in this pile of paperwork um, as I frantically rifle through. So trade payables, it says, take on average one month to pay. So her revenue figure for the year to the 30th of June 2018 is set to be 186624. So I've just picked that straight up off of the income statement, this, this one for the year ended June 2018. So that's everything she's going to sell. Um, and she expects them to take one month to pay. So at the end of the year, she's going to have one month's worth of trade receivables. So if we divide that figure by 12, that means that our trade receivables are going to be 15,552. So we can pop that one in there. Now the bank balance I'm going to come back to right at the end. We'll get the uh, the trade payables and everything else sorted out first of all. So trade payables, we can use the same process um, that we use for the trade receivables. It says that she pays them on average after two months. So that means that at the end of the year, June 2018, she's still going to owe two months worth. She'll still have May and June's purchases outstanding. So we're going to work on an average here. Her total purchases for the year are set to be 84 150, and I've just got that figure straight off of the, um, the budgeted income statement. Um, so if we multiply that by 2 over 12, or we'll just divide it by 6, she's going to have trade payables of £14,025 at the end of the year. So let's pop that in there. Okay, the other piece of information here is that Jane plans to take drawings of £60,000 from the business bank account. So Jane's drawings are going to come off down the bottom here. So we should be able to complete the bottom half of our statement of financial position. If we add up 57,500, add the profit for the year and take off the drawings, that tells us that our statement of financial position needs to balance at 65,882. Okay, so if we were to pop that figure in there, because remember it used to be called a balance sheet, so those two numbers always need to be the same, the net assets and the closing capital um, at the end of the year need to be the same number, 65882. Okay. Um, now, at the moment, we're still missing the bank account. So let's work out the bank account. I'm going to move on to a, a separate sheet of paper here. So the bank account, we need to start with the opening balance. So if we have a look 
at the actual um, statement of financial position, you'll see that we had 8,000, or Jane had 8,250 at the start of the year. Okay, then need to think about money in. Who are we going to get money in from? Well, that's going to be our trade receivables. Okay, now the trade receivables, we had £15,000 worth at the start of the year. Hopefully they're going to pay her um, during the year. So the opening balance of £15,000 should pay her during the year. Um, we're going to add on to that figure the sales for the year. Now, I think it probably says somewhere in this question that all of her sales are on a credit basis. So we just need to look back to the um, income statement, her budgeted income statement, find out what the sales were. We should probably be able to remember this now. 186624. Okay, but at the end of the year, she's still going to be owed some money. So if you remember here, we calculated that trade receivables were going to be 15000 552. So we need to take that off because she won't have received that money during the year. So the total amount that she's going to get in from her customers, if we add the 15,000 and the 186,624, take off the 15,552, she's still owed at the end. That means she should receive £186,072 during the year. Okay. We can then move on to the money out. Oops, I've forgotten how to write. So money out, let's start with the payables. We can do the same process that we did for receivables. So the opening balance is what was on her actual statement of financial position for last year. She owed 22,750 at the start of the year. We need to add on to that the purchases that she's gonna make during the year. So total of 84,150 that I'm taking from the income statement. And then we can take off the amount that she's going to owe to her payables at the end of the year, 14,025. So again, add the first two, deduct the second one, should find that we've got a total of £92,875 being paid to her suppliers during the year. Okay. Now she's also got some other expenses. If we have a look back to this, this income statement, she's going to be paying out for everything except for the depreciation. Now we want to ignore that because that is a non-cash expense, but if we add up these other four, we get a total amount of 29,742 going out. So this is all money that's gonna to need to be paid out. So let's take that out as well. So let's pop our expenses in there, 29,000. 742. Okay, now we're nearly done. The one thing we must remember if we go back to this statement of financial position is that she's going to take drawings out £60,000 in cash. So that is obviously going to make a sizable dent in her bank account. So we take that off and then we should find that we get a closing balance that will make our statement of financial position adds up. So to start with the 8250, add on the 186072 that she's receiving, take off the 92875, take off the 90, sorry, 29742, and take off the £60,000. And she's going to end up with 11705 in her bank account. So if we slot that in there, 11705 Watch out for if you get a negative figure in your calculator. Um, it's likely to be overdrawn, so that would then move down into current liabilities. It wouldn't be an asset. But it hasn't happened for Jane. We're hoping she's going to have a positive balance in her bank account. So if I add all those up, I get £47,507. If I then take the 14025 off, that is going to give me my net current assets, which I can pop in there. And then if I add the net book value of my non-current assets and my net current assets together, it should equal 65882. I probably should check that, make sure it's correct. Yeah, 65882. So if you have a look here, this is the textbook version. Hopefully all the numbers on here are exactly the same as the ones I've just shown you. Job done. Thanks for watching.